We thought that Evelyn was just going to come for three days. We had no idea that she was going to change our lives forever. The first time I saw Evelyn, we were both 19. She was dressed in white with high top sneakers, skateboarding down Bradley Street with a cigarette in one hand and a Diet Coke in the other. She was beloved in our small circle of college friends. <clears throat> I'm sure you've all had small circle of friends when you were young. For her big smile, her beautiful athleticism, and her very sharp and keen mind. We shared beautiful sunny days on Shelburne Point, boyfriends, frisbee, but there were also dark days when she wouldn't get out of bed and go to class, even though we implored her and told her she had to. She had to go to school. And so when we finally all left the University of Vermont, Evelyn to go to New York, me to stay here in Burlington, I have to admit it was with some sense of relief that I wouldn't really have to look after her anymore. About five years ago, we got an email from Evelyn, a group email, saying that she had breast cancer and that the clinical trial that she had participated in had not gone very well and that her executive function had been screwed up and that she now had to go on disability. But she was gonna take her disability money and buy a little pop-up trailer and go and live in the state parks of New York because she could live there for free. And they also, she added, were going to make her the volunteer photographer of the New York State Parks, which made her very happy because she loved to take pictures and she loved nature very deeply. The next email we got was, I'm coming to Vermont, but I'm not sure where to live. I need better medical care. So she moved near Dartmouth-Hitchcock, although it wasn't really near Dartmouth-Hitchcock. She, she found a place in Callis in the woods. She found a rescue dog buddy, and she found an A-frame in the forest on the property of a college professor who no longer was a college professor because he spent all of his time writing books on Sasquatch. <laughs> you can't make that up, can you? <laughs> she spent a beautiful summer in the forest, we knew, because she would send us these beautiful, beautiful pictures with Buddy. And then we got a call around this time of year, two years ago, and she said, it's getting cold and there's no heat here and I need to find a place to live. Can you come and get me while I find a place to live? So of course, who would not respond to that? We got a pickup truck, we went to Callis, we piled all our things in the truck, we drove to Burlington and we said, of course, come and live on our third floor. It'll only be for three days. The emergency housing that she was going to find really didn't seem necessary once she was on the third floor. There were other people that needed those motel rooms much more than she did. Plus, we loved her immediately, her smile, her wit, and her absolute clarity in the face of what was now certain death. She had bone cancer. She had six months to live. It's funny when they say you're given six months to live. And we thought, all right, well, six months isn't that long. You don't really think about that when you say it. But having Evelyn in our house was a great gift. People said to us very frequently when they found out that she was living on our third floor, that's incredible. Letting her in your house like that, that's just amazing. I would never do something like that. What an incredible gift. But the truth is, is that the gift was given by Evelyn to us. She came into our home. She was willing to live with us. And she gave us the enormous blessing of letting us travel on this path with her for the last days of her life. I know that living with us extended her life because 15 months later, when she started seeing woodland creatures, in fact, one morning at breakfast, she said, do you see the pony that's sitting over my shoulder? And we said, no, we don't, but I'm sure it's there. And of course, the hospice DNA nurse 
knew that it was time for her to go to the respite house, the place that we call the stairway to heaven. And we helped her get ready <clears throat> on this particular weekend. It was Martin Luther King weekend, this past one. She had been in our home for almost for over a year. And we knew also it was time because she couldn't really make it up and down the stairs very well anymore. So she agreed to have the paramedics come and take her to the respite house. And when they came in to look for her, to take her, they said, where is she? And you heard this voice from the top of the stairs. Here I am. And down the stairs, in a long, floor-length, black velvet dress, with blue Merrill shoes, <laughs> and no socks, came Evelyn. Here I am. Her last week at the respite house was another extraordinary experience, certainly for her and for all of us. Being young, 55, you can see in the final days of a person's life the struggle between life and death, and it is epic to behold. When she finally passed to the other side, the respite nurses had left the window open, and I know that her spirit immediately went in search of Buddy and the forest. And what we were left with as we dressed her in that black velvet dress for the last time was this immense sense of gratitude. We thought Evelyn was coming for three days, but we had no idea she was going to change our lives forever.